start. That's a good way to start on Monday morning. <laughs> Lane one day about forming a band. I said to him, I'd like to form a band. And um, he said, well, you know, I've got, I've got Steve Howe in the same position. Brian called me up and said, um, you know, I've just spoke to Steve Hackett. He's not doing much. Do you, do you fancy meeting him and, and just seeing if there's anything going on? What if you put two guitarists together? And he said, he said straight away, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be like sticking uh, Jimmy Page and Jeff Beck together. Straight away. He was in there with that line, and it seems to have stuck. So for two weeks, we um, just sort of met and uh, plonked around and talked in about principles, really, much more than um, anything else. It might work, you know, like two Steves, two people whose surname begin with H, both motivated by greed. The key to it was writing, and if we could write, we felt that if we could write together, then surely, being guitarists, we could hold a whole group together. The great thing about them was that, that I thought, well, maybe it's going to be just the two Steves, you know, supported by a few other guys. But they had a great idea of, you know, writing songs, and um, they just sounded great. So I said, well, you know, as soon as I finish the Asia album, I'll, uh, I'll be working with them. The idea of getting a keyboard player to produce them seemed like my logic, and, um, and that seems to work as well, because what Jeff is doing is innovating new technology into the guitar, you know, guitar played through sing clavier to make the guitar sound like keyboards. It's one of the features on this particular album. And yes, we were all equal, you know, we all went up together, we all sort of developed together, and Asia was a sort of group where we were, we'd all already developed when we'd got together, and in a way, um, GTR is really a partnership between me and Steve. I knew Jonathan because he'd auditioned already with me, he wanted to play with me, and I said to him, well, you know, hold on, because I may have something for you which you don't expect. So, tell us, Jonathan, what, what do you really perceive as your role in this group? Playing drums. My favorite other semi, you might call big things, Marillion being one, a group back home called The Fools, but as always just filling in freelancing. This was the first group I've ever joined. As soon as he sat down on the kit, it was like, boof, between the eyes. Then Jonathan actually, you know, suggested um, Phil, Phil Spaulding. So we tried him out after another bass player had almost, you know, just about made the grade. And then Phil came in, it was a bit like, you know. So why did you decide to switch the bass? Because I think at the time I was the smallest one. There were three guitar players and I was the smallest, so I was voted bass player. I said, you know, between you and me, everyone's pretty impressed with your, with your playing. You know, after ten minutes, we're all going, this guy can cut it. Before joining this group, I, I played a couple of years with Mike Oldfield, um, which was invaluable experience we 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 liked his his personality and his approach i saw this one what's the song song in it hello the thing that impressed me specifically when i saw the band was was max's singing because it's hard to find original singers these days it's hard to find a guy who, who gets up there holds a microphone and um, basically delivers. Max has got a has got a fantastic force. He, in, in many ways, is, is the secret weapon that the group have because. It's the hardest thing to find a great singer in a band.
I've often pinched myself some days and I'm actually involved with this band, but um, uh, no, I don't, I don't think it's a dream. I think Steve Howe is, he's much more of a lead player, you know. He's like, he'll tear into a lead part all the time. What would happen with no keyboards? You know, having two guitars is obviously a good buffer so that that, you know, didn't become a whole gap in, in one's music. It was time to, to take that wall away and see what would happen if it wasn't there. On some of the tracks, Steve has the guy who's thinking like a keyboard player and thinking in terms of rhythm parts. And, and Steve Hackett's blowing, blowing around all over the place, you know. All guitarists really want to do is like turn up and make a lot of noise, don't they? They all want to be the kinks, really. Electric guitar is like the, at its best when it's when it's slightly out of control, really. It's that sort of mad beast. But the two complement seem to complement themselves very, very well. I learned to do something that a lot of guys do these days with a with a plectrum, but for some reason I I did it because I I grew my nails and so it was like being able to do things a bit faster, which was like hammering on and off, like. You know, they've got the same qualities and very different qualities as well. For instance, the acoustic guitar playing. I mean, Steve Hackett much more prefers to play a nylon guitar. prefers to play a steel acoustic guitar. You've got to have a lot of films, there'll be a lot of outtakes. It's not a documentary, you want to get back to work. I think the landlord across the road is a little bit richer than he was uh, an hour ago. I'll tell you yeah. what, Al, I've just had scampi and chips for one pound and five pence. One pound pence. and five pence. And it was loads lovely. of jockey's whips. This is an advert. Right? And scampi. It would was, you work with these lovely. guys? Can you believe it would have char charged you eight pound in that canteen? Yeah, they tell you now, don't eat at the townhouse canteen. Oh! oh. oh. That is... Oh. You get ripped off. They all, think, they, all, they all think we're millionaires. We are. There's only one millionaire here. I wish I was. After a while you get cabin fever, I think. It's almost like being a permanent member of staff, really. After a while it's like, hello George, hello, you know, the doorman. He must work here all the time. You know, bands come and go. Queen have made six albums since we've been here. That's not true. We've explored certain things because of having the Synclavia and the Fairlight and MIDI keyboards. We've been able to, uh, we think, make a connection nobody else has done, which is play a guitar, fire the Synclavia and a whole bank of MIDI keyboards, which, which is quite a spectacular sound. I sort of brought with me a lot of um, technical knowledge in terms of what, what a lot of modern instruments do in terms of programming and... Uh, sequencing and all that kind of thing which they were very very interested in and still are you know in terms of how do you make a guitar do unbelievable things like play a piano chord or something you know one of the tracks you know is the first time i actually play a piano you know i'm playing the guitar it's going through the emulator too and out comes a piano and that for me is fantastic this is a great experience i'm not trying to 
pretend, you know, I'm Chopin, but what I am doing is putting guitar thinking into uh, the keyboard sound. I've never been in a band that's worked harder on, on material, so, you know, from that point of view, it's, it's, um, it's the close detail thing, really. I haven't been able to get away with anything so far, but I intend to. There's a lot of mistakes you can make making a record, you know, folks. Uh, if you put the lead guitar on early and then the singers come in, you know, they go, hang on a second, and you've played over everything. And likewise, if you give the singer total free reigns, he'll sing everywhere you were going to play lead guitar. So that's why the, the guitarists have been watching the progress of the album and making sure that a singer does not sing on a guitar spot, and likewise, we've not blotted out his area. <laughs> which goes, um, the riff is something like, and it was on the guitar synth, this was something that Steve first played me when we got together. Um. But then there was the chorus, which... I had this idea a while ago which went reasonably bizarre song that we've done that, that, that actually the lyric came about because we were sitting looking at some lyrics we'd written and uh, I just said to Steve you know wow this really looks like sort of you know pointing at one bit Dr Jekyll and another bit Mr Hyde. If anything was made for stadiums this, this particular thing was you know it's like da, 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 boom, big sort of chords and things and um, but the rest of it's quite dancey in a way. Steve hadn't said, wow, isn't that a good idea for a song, you know, then we wouldn't have, we wouldn't have that idea. My favourite song you should still get through, that's, uh, that's really, that's got my power. solo 12 string guitar solo really to, I mean you know alone one man the guitar sort of style
see he's done something quite different. Got to try, yeah, I, I did something which is like sort of a, a whammy bar extravaganza. One I feel um, really strongly about, I think, is um, a track called The Hunter. Pick up the rifle, you must be strong. To take a title can be so long. If you believe you can go wrong, I say, I say. something really dreadful to start with bone shape or something and then i walked in and said you know i've got a new idea for it you know i've got a couple of verses let's have a look and everybody sort of crawled around on the floor for a while and 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 when we got up we had we had imagining eventually it became a song and we put um chords to it so we thought at the end it'll be nice if it goes <laughs> on the whole album coming up. theatres. Um, the idea is not to play the big arenas. I think all musicians 
like to get back to roots every so often. It's a good opportunity to do this, to actually get back to playing where you've got the people at your feet. We have talked about doing um, very stylish numbers from the past, yes. Um, you know, if I say like Siberian Couture, not necessarily Siberian Couture, but the kind of number that's got a hell of a lot of impact and, and really says, um, you know, this is a period piece, if you like, a classic period piece. Um, I hope we're going to do that sort of thing. When the ticket sales are announced, I'm sure there's Steve Howe fans who specifically want tickets on the left-hand side of the auditorium, and Steve Hackett fans will probably want the right-hand side of the auditorium. Me, I want to sit in the middle because like, I like Steve Howe and Steve Hackett, and I also quite fancy the other three in the musical, not the biblical sense, of course. They, they may think they're in control, but <laughs> wait till we get on stage, they won't be. <laughs> We'll be taking over then. Kind of nice that after all the rest, suddenly the props fall away and you're left with just the playing.